three new Galaxy watches just launched and I think we have a few reasons to be excited but also some to be worried and I'll explain all of that in this video. Now there's two new Galaxy Watch 8 and a new Galaxy Watch Ultra. Now in some ways they're the same but actually the design and the sensor is a bit different so let's get into it. There's two new Galaxy Watch 8s. We have the 8 and the 8 Classic. Now, the 8 Classic again has a rotating bezel which many people like and the new design of both is more similar to the Galaxy Watch Ultra so this sort of cushion design with a more square shape around a round shape. They're also thinner and more powerful and both have dual frequency GPS which is good so I'll be doing the GPS test once I get them. The sensor is now actually closer to the wrist which Samsung says gives better accuracy especially during workouts. Now this would be great, I actually had some contact with them after my reviews of the Galaxy Watch 7 and the Galaxy Watch Ultra and they were very keen to improve their performance. Unfortunately I wasn't able to send them any data yet so I don't know if my testing will be any better but hopefully they could do much more testing internally and they now have better heart rate tracking performance for instance when you're running. And that actually brings me to running because running is a big focus of the new Galaxy watches. By the way for those of you who don't know me my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis and I test smart watches from a more scientific or systematic perspective. But back to running, there's an all new running code on the smartwatches which can provide you with a structured program for your runs. Of course I'll be seeing if this makes any sense. The screens of the new Galaxy watches are also quite bright at up to 3000 nits which should help you see that screen when you're running in a sunny environment. Now the second focus they had in this launch event was a focus on sleep. In my previous reviews we already saw that Samsung Health had a lot of focus on sleep, some good, some bad. I don't actually expect that the sleep staging will be any better. So that's one part of the sleep tracking. This is something that Samsung historically has been mediocre at. I actually have some data for that, let me show you. And here you can see an overview of the sleep stage tracking performance of many brands and many models. Now the way to interpret this overview is that the further to the top right a device is, the better is its correlation or its agreement with the reference device. Now the reference device in this case is the ZMAX EG headband in many cases, or another EEG headband that are designed for sleep stage tracking and can actually measure my brain waves. Now most smart watches measure three sleep stages, light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep and I then compare that to that reference. And you can see that the furthest to the top right are especially Apple watches, the Aura Ring, the 8 Sleep Pod, one of my favorite sleep trackers out there and also actively cools and heats the bed so it really improves my sleep quality but it's also really expensive and there's also the Sleep 2 or Nuco app. And in the second tier we have the Whoop Strap and different Pixel and Fitbit devices. But where are the Galaxy watches? Well let's make all the other devices transparent and then we can see where all the Galaxy devices are. So these are all the Samsung Galaxy watches I tested in the past and also a Galaxy Ring. And they're all sort of in the middle of all devices. They're not the absolute worst which are down here. Well actually there's the Galaxy Fit 3 here but mostly they're not down here and they're also not amongst the absolute best. So they're okay, but not great. And this is confirmed with three different reference devices. So the one in blue purple right here, we tested against polysomnography, the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. The ones in blue were tested against the Z Max and the ones not marking any color were tested against the Dream 2. Those details are not that important. The conclusion is so far the sleep stage tracking of the Galaxy watches is not quite as good as for instance Pixel, so Google devices or Apple watches and those are the main competitors so I would say they need to up their game a little bit. Now of course we don't know, I'll be testing that. Hopefully the sleep stage tracking will be improved on the new Galaxy watches. If they collected a lot of new reference data and trained a new model, it is possible that they now have better sleep stage tracking. But even if their sleep stage tracking isn't particularly good, the sleep tracking of the Galaxy watch could still be useful by tracking your heart rate during the night, your heart rate variability, but also for instance your total time asleep, all these kinds of things. These are probably most important in their sleep score. But let's now get to the new stuff I'm most excited about with these new Galaxy watches and those are the vascular load and the antioxidant index feature. So let's start with vascular load. What is this new vascular load feature? Well according to Samsung on the latest Galaxy Watch models this estimates the cumulative stress on your cardiovascular system during sleep. Using those optical sensors in your watch the watch tracks trends in your arterial stiffness and overall heart strain presenting results on a low to high scale. 
Now, as I understand it now, and I'll do more research for my full review, an elevated vascular load overnight may indicate strain influence by factors such as poor sleep, high salt or alcohol intake and chronic stress. Now, these kinds of things, if you have them long term chronically are linked to heart disease risk, I wouldn't take one score too seriously, but maybe it's a motivation to live a tiny bit healthier, for instance. The way I think Samsung intends you to use these patterns is that this feature aims to help users understand how their daily habits affect cardiovascular health. Now, as always with these kind of experimental half scientific things, this is available as more of an experimental feature and it's not intended as a diagnostic tool. Now, the second thing I'm quite excited about, which I'm also not sure yet how useful it will be, is measuring your antioxidant levels in the skin. So the new Galaxy watches can measure skin health and healthy skin aging in a way. This new antioxidant index feature measures your carotenoid levels. I hope I pronounced it correctly as a non-native English speaker. These are basically antioxidants associated with diet and general health. And it does all of this through the watch's optical sensors. To perform the test as far as I could find online now, you remove your watch and place your thumb, for instance, on the sensor at the back and hold that for approximately five seconds. The watch then displays a numerical and color-coded result, which can also be viewed in the Samsung Health app, alongside with additional information and general dietary suggestions. Similar to the previous test, this test is non-invasive, but it also doesn't provide a medical diagnosis and it's designed exclusively for the Watch 8 series and I guess also the new Watch Ultra. The aim of this is to give you insight in your antioxidant state is based on your carotenoid detection, offering another metric alongside with those fitness and wellness tracking tools that were introduced. Now this will be a difficult one for me to test, but one thing I can do is do a lot of tests in a row during the day at different times and seeing if the results are at least consistent and then also testing on a few other people. So stay tuned for that testing. I already ordered all three watches. It wasn't cheap. I spent about, I think 2000 euros today, but of course everything for you guys. Before getting to my conclusions, if you want to support the channel there's multiple ways of doing this first of all just liking and subscribing would be amazing and for everybody who's already a subscriber thank you so much you can also become a youtube member and you get early access to some videos or use some of my affiliate links down below if you buy anything on amazon during this amazon prime sales if you first click my link that will give some affiliate money to my channel and doesn't cost you any extra or if you're into running and you want better running plans, use the Runner app with my affiliate link to get the best deal possible. Just check out the links below, that would be really appreciated. But what is my current conclusion on the new Galaxy Watch 8 series and the new Galaxy Watch Ultra? Well, first of all, I hope that the heart rate tracking during exercise is improved because this really wasn't that amazing on the old Galaxy Watches. I can actually show you that really quickly right now. So I quickly wanted to show you how the sensor of the Galaxy Watch Ultra performed for tracking your heart rate during different exercises and how it compares to the Pixel Watch and the Apple Watch. Now in this overview, we have different exercises along the horizontal axis. So indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, running indoor, outdoor, and weightlifting. And along the vertical axis, we have the correlation with the reference device. And again, we want that value to be as high as possible. So the higher the dot, the better the performance, and each dot is a different device. So here, for instance, for cycling indoor, spinning, the Galaxy Watch Ultra is quite low compared to all the other dots. So it's really not doing that well. For cycling outside, it's sort of in the middle of all devices, so okay-ish. For running indoor, it did quite well, so it's quite close to the maximum value of one. Again, for running, it's sort of in the middle, so not amazing. And also for weightlifting, it's not doing very good. And I didn't just test the Galaxy Watch Ultra, but some other Galaxy Watches as well. So here we have the results for the Galaxy Watch 7, just for three sports. But I would say that overall, it's very similar. But how do the Apple Watch and the Pixel Watch perform? Well, let's have a look. So here, for instance, we have the results of the Apple Watch Series 10. And as you can see, it's always at the top of all devices. So it's always one of the better devices out there. And if instead we look at a heavier watch, which can sometimes compromise heart rate performance like the Apple Watch Ultra 2, we actually see this still does very well. All the red lines and dots are still on the top. So the Apple Watches, both the Apple Watch Series 10 and the Apple Watch Ultra, are definitely doing better than the previous generations of Samsung watches I tested. And to close off, let's take a look at the Pixel Watch, another Samsung Galaxy Watch competitor. And as you can see, the red lines and dots of the Pixel Watch are also very high on this graph. Maybe not quite as high for weightlifting, but it's anyway difficult to track your heart rate. So both the 45 millimeter version and an independent test with the 41 millimeter version of the Pixel Watch shows that the heart rate tracking during exercise of the Pixel Watch so far has always been better than that of the Galaxy Watch. 
But let's hope that the Galaxy Watch in this new generation can be on par either based on hardware improvements or software improvements with both the Apple Watch and the Google Pixel Watch. So heart rate tracking during exercise is one thing I hope they can improve and they actually are quite a bit behind the Pixel Watch and the Apple Watch at the moment. So it would be great if they can improve this. Second, I hope that the sleep staging is improved. I doubt this honestly, but it would be amazing. And then I'm really keen to try out those new sensors and see if they can tell me anything useful and also actionable for my life. Because if I can just measure them and I can't do anything with them, then they're basically useless and it might just make people unnecessarily worried. But let's find out. Now, all Galaxy watches should launch around July 25th and the pricing is a bit more expensive than before. From what I could see on the website, the standard cheapest Galaxy Watch 8 is now $350 for the smaller version and $380 for the larger version. If you add 4G to it, that's like 30 to 50 bucks more expensive. The Galaxy Watch 8 Classic starts at $500 and runs up to $550. 50 if you also add 4G and the new Galaxy Watch Ultra is available for $650. Now these prices will of course differ by country and even retailer potentially. Now given that you watched this whole video on the new Galaxy Watches, check out my testing of the original Galaxy Watches right here and right here.